Let's turn to Judges. Chapter 16. I'm just going to read a part of this. Come on, stand with me. We're going to be finishing up the life of Samson today. And we're going to um, entitle this Let's Walk in the Word episode number 34. We're going to entitle this one What Happens in Vegas Stays in You Sometimes. You've heard the saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But sometimes what happens in Vegas can stay in you. And you'll take Vegas with you. Verse 1, Judges 16. Now Samson went to Gaza and he saw a harlot there, a prostitute. And he went into her. When the Gazites were told, Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night saying, in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight, then arose at midnight and took hold of the doors of the gates of the city and the two doorposts pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that faced Hebron. I'm just going to stop right there. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord God, and um, Lord, your gifts and your calls come without repentance. But Father, we just pray, Lord, that you would help us to develop the character, character enough that can overcome temptation. Whatever it temptation, we have the tendency to succumb to. Lord, teach us today that we don't overcome our temptation, that our temptation can overcome us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Now, for those of you who haven't been with us, we learned last week that Samson began his 20-year judgeship. He was judge over Israel for 20 years while the Philistines were still in power. See, the other judges ran out the people that were subjugating them. Samson was judge over Israel while the Philistines still had influence and power and authority and domination over them. Now, this is very interesting when you match up the fact that Samson's character was such that his passions wanted to hang out with the, with the Philistines, he was unable to drive out the Philistines. As a matter of fact, I don't even see anywhere where he tried to drive out the Philistines that was subjecting his people to bondage, that was taking away their freedom, that was, that was leaving them in an impoverished scenario. He didn't even try to drive them out. He was just happy being their judge while they were going through hard times and he enjoyed the privileges of being judge without actually driving out their enemies because he liked to hang out with the Philistines. Okay? So he was in the midst of his 20-year judgeship and he decided that he was going to take a vacation like many of us do. And, and so he picked a vacation spot. His vacation spot for this time was Gaza. 
Gaza was an oceanfront city, and it was like any beach city like Miami or, or L.A. or um, um, Cancun. And so he decided that he's going to spend time on the beach. Now, this was a large tourist city, so they had a lot of stuff for the tourists to do. I'm sure they had um, um, places that they could go gambling in. I'm sure they had places where they could um, see various sights, the beauty of the shore. You could get an oceanfront flat and look out at the ocean. Um, I'm, I'm sure they probably had um, ancient surfing or, or, or something like that on the, on the Mediterranean Sea. It was a beautiful place, a lot of stuff they did, and they had a lot of of houses of ill repute it was a lot like Las Vegas okay he wanted to sow his wild oats okay and by the way you know I, I've heard this said many times um, to young people to sow your wild oats get it out while you're young okay there's a big problem with that okay um, uh, 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 you can't get it out by doing it. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Okay, whatever's in you, that desire, that passion, those things that you know are not right to do, you can't get it out of you by doing it no more than you can clean a floor by mopping it with muddy feet. Have you ever tried to mop a floor with muddy feet? It doesn't, you, listen here, you can, you can, man, if your feet are muddy, just imagine my feet are just cake full of mud. But I'm mopping the floor with my muddy feet. It doesn't matter how much I swing that mop, okay? Every time I swing the mop, my feet are just leaving a trail of dirt, and I'll never be able to get it up. Listen here, you don't, you don't get it out of your system by doing it. You get it out of your system by refusing to do it. Okay. You say, you say well, well, it feels like I'm just going to bust or, or, or burst if I don't do it. Okay, no, 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 no. That, the opposite is true. When you sow your wild oats, okay, you're going to reap a crop of wild oats. And by the way, it's nothing that you can do with a wild oat. It serves no good purpose, and the wild oats can, can choke out the real oats in your life. Wild oats become like weeds and choke out the real oats, the things that you're supposed to actually be feeding on, and it can lead to destruction. Okay, but he says, I'm going to just go on down here and what, stay, what, what goes on in Gaza stays in Gaza. Although I'm public enemy number one, although I'm a judge in Israel, I'm going to go and uh, sneak around Gaza. And, I'm gonna, and, and he went to Gaza and it says right here, he says, um, uh, it says, Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. So it was a bad girl walking the streets. Um, and um, he drove up in his car and he said, um, toot toot, beep beep. I'm showing my age with, with, with the Donna Summer um, reference. And he drove her to the hotel, okay? Again, we see Samson's weakness is women, okay? The enemy quickly learned of Samson's activities and whereabouts and set a trap. What I want you to know is you as a believer, how many born-again believers do we have in the house? Just raise your hand, okay? Listen, when you go over into enemy territory, you set yourself up to be vulnerable for a spiritual attack that can come into your life and wreck everything for you. See, you, you may think that you're just peeking, okay? You may think that you're just sneaking, okay? But, see, uh, uh, um, when you're on enemy territory, okay, the enemy knows exactly what you're doing, and he is setting you up for a fall. Be very 
very careful. And by the way, be very careful when you travel. Okay, because you, when you travel, you, you think that you're kind of anonymous. Okay, but they always have stuff for you when you travel. Okay, you know, they, they, have, they have channels on the TVs when you travel that you may not have at home. And you need to watch yourself when you travel and you think that you are all, all alone, but the devil can have a trap set for you. Now, Samson knew he was in danger. He knew he was in danger before he left and went to Gaza. He knew he was public enemy number one to the Philistines, okay? But he also knew that his enemy was no match for him. Okay, Samson was arrogant, and the Bible says that pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Okay, by the way, there's a difference between a healthy confidence and faith in God's protective shield over your life and arrogant confidence in your own abilities that result in blatant disregard for God and others. Okay? See, as Christians, we should be bold as a lion. See, to the believer, we are indestructible until God says our time is over. Okay? So we should be bold and very courageous, but we shouldn't be arrogant, okay, and, and, and think that we can do anything that we want to and the shield of the Lord will be upon us. See, that's how the devil tempted Jesus. The devil says, hey, Jump off of this high pillar, uh, pinnacle of the temple and, uh, and um, because the Bible says he will give his angels charge over you so that you won't even dash your foot against the stone. Okay? It, it, Jesus says, man, get out of my face. Okay? I'm not going to be arrogant. I know who I am. I know God's protection over me, but I'm not going to listen to what you said, okay, or what you say in order to um, prove and take undue risk, okay? But Samson, uh, um, these guys, they surrounded the place and they laid in wait for him at the gate of the city, okay? They said there's only one way out of the city and that's through the gate. It was a walled city to protect the people from invading armies, from robbers, uh, um, um, and this was a huge stone wall and it had a huge gate okay most city gates were big enough to drive two cars through if just using today's terms okay it was like a it was like two big three car garage um um in width okay and they were generally um 10 feet high at least Okay, Gaza wasn't a huge city, so let's just say that this was 10, 12 feet high. Let's say that the gates were um, 20 feet, 30 feet wide each, all made of timber, half trees each, okay, with metal on them, okay, so that there would be fire resistance, so there was iron on there that covered the entire gate, okay. There were nails, and there were these giant posts, that were made of iron about this big around that the gate hinged on. Okay, that's what we're talking about. The gate probably weighed at least one to four tons. Okay, so they waited at the gate. It says, Samson laid low till midnight. At midnight, he was through doing what he was doing, and then he arose at midnight, and look what he did. He took hold of the doors of the gates of the city and the two gate posts, pulled them up, bar and all, post and all, and put them on his shoulder. He, if you can imagine, he put, you can't even rip up the gate on your privacy fence that's going around your house. You know, I mean, and by the way, that is nothing, okay? These gates were this thick. Okay, they, 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 it, was, it was the equivalent of lifting 10 trees. He pulled them up, yanked them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulder, and walked to the next hill, which, which scholars believe were 30 miles away. 
and stood on the hill, 30 miles with that on his shoulder. Superhuman strength. And by the way, you, you may ask yourself, where were the dudes that were laying in wait for them? Well, oh, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But all I can tell you, if it was me, and I saw a dude rip up the, 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 the gates like that, put him on his shoulder and walk, uh, 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 I would keep hiding. I'd be like, is he gone yet? <laughs> All right. Toward the end of his 20-year tenure as judge, um, he fell in love with a woman. Let's look at verse, the next verse. Um, afterwards, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek. Now, now you, to understand the geography, Samson was from Dan. He was from the territory of Tan Dan. The valley of Sorek was right next door, okay? They shared a common boundary. So he would go over and kind of sneak over into Philistine territory. It was kind of like Plano and Allen or Plano and Richardson. They were right next to each other where he lived in this valley of Sorek. And he met a woman whose name was Delilah. Now, what can we say about Delilah? Okay, she wasn't a professional prostitute per se, okay? But um, she, was, she had skills with the fellas, okay? And, um, and um, uh, uh, let's just put it like this, her bills stayed paid. Okay, I, 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 I ain't calling her a gold digger, but uh, she, I mean, she was messing with a judge, okay? Uh, uh, uh. Verse 5, the Lord of the Philistines came to her and said to her, entice him. See, they knew, they knew the lot. See, they knew she had skills, okay? They, 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 knew, they knew that, that if Delilah, she knew how to ask a man and get anything that she wanted, okay? She said, entice him and find out where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him that we may bind him to afflict him. Okay, we, we are unable to catch him. We are unable, even if we catch him, we can't keep hold of him. What do we need? I need for you to find out the source of his strength. This strength that this man has is not human. He has got to have some type of source of strength. And yet we need for you to find out. And if you find out, every one of us, by the way, there were five lords of the Philistines. He said, every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Okay, so if you do your math, uh, 1,100 times 5 is 5,500 pieces of silver, okay, uh, um, um, probably worth around a half a million dollars, okay. Now for a gold digger, okay, hey, and that, that was music to her ears, okay. You didn't say nothing but a word to Delilah, okay. Now, now they were supposed to be in love, understand it. Samson had the worst luck with the women, you know, he, it was just, it was just terrible, you know, he always had these women that would sell him down the river, okay, but, but what you need to understand is, is, is Samson had an addiction. Samson was not in control of himself, okay, you know how I know, okay, because of what happens, okay, there are four rounds to Delilah's um, trying to get the source of Samson's strength. Okay. By the way, addiction plus arrogance plus an evil influence leads to disaster. Okay. See, in, in other words, if you have a habit, okay, and you're so arrogant, you you are that you will not recognize that you have an addiction. Okay, and then there is a person that wants to use your addiction for their own profit. Okay, it's going to end up in your disaster. Okay, verse, verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, 
please tell us where your great strength lies uh, um, and, and, and with what you may be bound to afflict you. Look at the question she asked. And she just came all the way out with it. <laughs> you know, this, this, I, I want you to hear the question she asked. She says, she says please tell me where is your uh, uh, great strength. Let, let your girl know, okay, where your great strength lies. And, and let me know how, how, we, how um, you can be bound. Can anybody bind you? I'm sure she said it in a way, you know, that was, that was more maybe impressive than that. Can anybody bind you up? Okay, what's the source of your strength? Uh, um, 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 can anybody afflict you? Okay, he just came right out of with it. And, and, and um, what do we have to do to afflict you? <laughs> okay, now, if that was you or me, okay, we would have got up out of there. <laughs> you, you, I, I, I would have probably did something like this. This is the source of my strength right here. And you, you heard the door slam. Okay, that, that's the source of my strength, slamming doors. Okay, but, but no, 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 not Samson. Samson was playing her game. Okay, he says, he, says, uh, um, he says to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings not yet dried, then I will become weak like any other man. See, he came over her house. I, I just want to I I, I put it to you so that you can understand, okay? He went over her house for a certain reason. Okay? Okay, so, so okay. How many guys I got in the audience? Just show, show me your hands, okay? Okay, he went over her hands for a certain reason, for a particular reason, okay? So the conversation ensues, okay? She wants to talk about his strength. He don't want to talk about no strength. Okay? She won't stop talking about this thing. Okay? He's trying to get to his destination for the evening. Okay? So he's just trying to tell her anything just to shut her up, okay, so that he can get what he came there for. Okay? He said, okay, bow strings. That was the first thing. Okay? So. Um, they did what they did, okay? He fell asleep, okay? And um, check this out. It, it, the, the Lord of the Philistines bought her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound them up with them. And now men were lying in wait, staying with her in the room. There were dudes under the bed. <laughs> they was in the closet. Okay, yeah, that's what it says. It says she, they were stand with her in the room, and she said to them, "The Philistines are upon you, Samson. He woke him up, but 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 she had bound him. They had bound him. Okay, and he and he gets up, and he he knows he's bound. And look what happens. It says, but he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. It go just like that." Okay, so the secret of his strength was not known. Okay, he probably whooped the dudes up and and um, and left, and 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 then came back the next day. Okay, uh, um, um, you, see that's what I'm saying. That, see that's how that, that's addiction. Okay, see see you know that she bound you up. Okay, and you know that she called dudes from under the bed. Okay, you you're not dumb. Okay, you're not done. Where did the dudes come from? Okay, where did the bowstrings come from? While he sleep. Okay, uh, 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 so after this, Samson was just through with her, right? No. Okay, just like this first wife. He, it wasn't like his first wife. He got mad and just left her, but now he's addicted. Okay, round two. Then the, the Delilah says, look. You have mocked me and told me lies. Now let me tell, now please tell me what you may be bound. Look, this girl had nerve. <laughs> he came back and she said, and, and she had the nerve. She tried to set him up and then she had the nerve to be upset. <laughs> it 
And he said to her, okay, 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 let's get this over with. Okay, if they, if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak like any other man. And Delilah took the new ropes and bound them with it. <laughs> Delilah took the ropes and bound them with it. Okay? And, 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 but while he was asleep, Okay, and it said, it said, she said, the Philistines are upon you, son, and dudes came rolling from under the bed again, and uh, from out of doors, it was all over the place, and they were, they were lying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arms like a thread. Boom. Okay, beat up the dudes, sent them on his way. Okay, round three. Okay, come back over the house again. But check out round three. Look at the progression now, okay? Delilah says, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head into the weave of the loom. Now, now he's getting closer to his real source of strength. You, you see what I'm saying? See, see, sin takes you on a decline. It doesn't always bring you down instantly. Okay, it takes you on a downward spiral that sometimes takes a long time, but you get closer and closer and closer and closer to demise, and you get closer to the source of your strength. And and uh, so so now she he, she put him back, she put him to sleep again. Yeah 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 that's that's what it said. I mean, she really put him to sleep because when you can weave somebody's, the locks of somebody, apparently he has seven braids, okay? And she was weaving them on a loom. You know, you got to really be asleep, okay, to do that. Okay, so she, so she wove it tightly um, with the batten of the womb and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson, but he awoke from his sleep and he pulled out the batten uh, and the web from the loom, beat up those dudes, okay, um, went, went home. Okay, came back, next round, round four. This is the knockout round. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? She's holding him accountable to love. Okay, when she obviously doesn't love him. Okay, you see, but, but he didn't care about any of that. All he cared about is satisfying his addiction. Okay, and, and she says, uh, uh, you have mocked me three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. And check this out, brothers. Verse 16, and it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. No commentary. <laughs> but I think somebody knows what that feels like. <laughs> pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his, his soul was vexed to death. Woo! She was on him. No, strength, 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 strength. Tell me your strength. I don't know how she did. She just pestered him, pestered him, pestered him. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and he finally gave in. He told her all his heart. He said to her, no razor had ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I'm shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I will become weak like any other man. Verse 18, and then Delilah saw that he had told her all her heart, all his heart. And she sent and called for the, for the lords of the Philistines, saying, come up once more. I got him this time. He has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up and bought with, with, with money in their hand. And she lulled him to sleep on his knees and called for a man to shake. She had men all over the place. She called for a man. man came from under the bed and started cutting off his hair. You know, he had a dude up under there with scissors. Okay, and she began to, and, and, and look, look, she, and, he, and, she, and he shaved off the seven locks of his head. Look, then she began to torment him. 
let's just stop right there. When you depart from God and you get involved in something that you think is good and that you think loves you and that you think is good to do, okay, that same thing will mock you and torment you, okay? When, it, when, when the thing has reached its fullness. You see, listen, I, I, want, I want to talk to the young people today, okay? I, 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 want, I, want, to, I want to tell the young people, hey, listen, what, what the counsel that you've received from your parents, okay? Listen, they know what they're talking about because they've seen people tormented doing what you're trying to do to have fun. Okay, listen, I want to talk to the middle-aged people. Okay, for us, those of us who haven't figured it out yet. Okay, those things that are driving you away from God. Okay, away from that connection with God. Those things, when you wake up, will stand over you and torment you. I want to talk to the old people who haven't figured it out yet. Okay, listen here. Anything outside of the will of God, okay, that, that, that you give yourself to, okay, will one day rise and torment you. Look, she, she not only, you, you would think that she would feel bad for Samson. She tormented him. She teased him. She mocked him. They bound him. Look what they did to him. It, it says, uh, look at uh, uh, verse 21. The Philistines took him and they gouged out his eyes while she was tormenting them. Delilah was a trap. They put out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza, and they bound him with bronze feathers, and he became a grinder in the prison. He, he grinded a wheel round and round and round, okay? And they made him, they made him a slave, and they, they caused him to perform for them while they laughed at him and mocked him. Verse 23. Now the lords of the Philistine gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, to, and to rejoice. And they said, our God has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. And when the people saw him, they praised their God because they said, see, 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 all, all the other times, there wasn't no talk about God. Okay? They, they were acting like they didn't have any God. They were acting like they didn't have any principles. But see, a lot of folks that you hang around with, okay, they actually do have a God. Okay, and, and it's not the Lord God Almighty. Okay, a, a lot of what's going on in this world, people are serving a God. Okay, they're not letting you know they're serving a God. Okay, but they're serving a God. Okay. And, and, and his name is Satan. And they, uh, they, they, they he, our God has delivered our enemy into his hands. See, he should have been singing this song about the Philistines, but they're singing it about him. So, verse 25. So it happened when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson that he may perform for us. Okay, they, they, they was going to get him and let him wander around blind while people smacked him and stuff and, 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 and all that. Let him perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them and they stationed him between the pillars. So they have him chained up between these two pillars. And then Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. And all the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men uh, and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord, 
saying, Oh Lord, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistine for my two eyes. Okay, now I want you to see a couple of things. He should have been doing this over this 20-year ministry. Okay, that the Lord had to blind him in order for him to do what he should have been doing for 20 years. Okay, you know, you know, there may be somebody here. You've been in the Lord now for a year. You've been in the Lord for three years or five years or 10 years or 20 years or maybe even longer. And you know that God has been calling you to take certain territory in your life. Okay, there, there are certain things that he wants you to accomplish for his glory. Okay, he, th there are certain people, see, see, these Philistine lords were dogging his people. Okay, they, they were under bondage and they were not free. Okay, and, and, and there are people all around you that are in bondage and are not free and you notice these things and you know God is calling you to do something about it, but, but you say tomorrow. I'll get started on it next year. I'll get started when I got a little bit more money to work with it. Okay? The, the, the problem with that is, the, the, the dangerous question is, does he have to blind you and, and have you in bronze fetters before you do the thing that he called you to do? It's just, just a question. It might not be you. It might just be your neighbor, okay? But, but it, it might be you, okay? It might be me. What does God have to do to bring us to the point so that we have that one last hurrah? That's not how God intended. God intended for him to do a little bit in year one, a little bit in year two, a little bit in year three, four, five, all the way to 20, Okay, instead of just having this one thing where he had to actually kill himself while he destroyed his enemies. And that's what happened. He says, he says, Lord, that I with one blow may be able to take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. I want you to see another thing. It's still all about Samson. He want to take vengeance for his two eyes. He don't want to take vengeance for God's glory. Right. That the Philistines have taken over his people. His people have been suffering for, for 20 years while he was judged. Okay, the, the Philistines have put a lot of people's eyes out over that period of time. But it's, for, for Samson, it was all about Samson. He really never learned his lesson. But one thing God did do, God did use him. And with one blow, Okay, it says he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the Lord's and on all the people who were in it so that dead he killed at his death more people than he killed in his life. Okay, you know, the, uh, uh, um, Samson, the thing I hate about the story about Samson is that Samson is me. Samson is you. We, we, we have these things that we need to get rid of in our lives. But instead, we're embracing them. We're hanging around with Delilah. Now, now, now it might not be a woman for you. It might not be a man. Okay? It, it could be you, you, you have this pride, Delilah. Okay? You have this anger, Delilah. Okay, you have this, this materialism, Delilah. Okay, it doesn't matter what Delilah's name is. Okay, the thing about it is, is, is we keep flirting with it. We keep telling our secrets. We keep playing her game. Okay, what do you need to do to turn it around? It's simple. Get on your knees. Confess it. See, see, all you got to do from turn from, stamps, from Samson 
okay, into Samuel. By the way, there was another judge at the time. His name was Samuel, and we'll get to him a little later. But they were, they were two years apart, okay? Samson was two years older than Samuel. While Samson was hanging around in Gaza um, with hookers, okay, um, Samuel was preaching the word of God. The difference between Samson and Samuel is humility. It's getting down on your knees, okay? And, and going with that thing before the Lord and asking him for all that great strength that he's shown in you to be put to that thing that is binding you, okay? He, you, you know how strong God is. He can apply that strength to any area. That's why he gave Samson that strength. I believe more than anything else, I believe that God gave Samson his great strength so that he can show Samson that he can overcome his lust for women. Okay? God gave Samson all that strength because he wanted you to know that he has enough power so that you can overcome anything that you are overcome by. I wish that we had one person today that are ready to become humble before Almighty God over that thing. You know what your thing is. Let's stand. I want to do something today. I'm not going to call you forward.